congregation at this time and ask everyone who would like to join our church to please come forward and stand and face the congregation at this time. Let's welcome them as they come. Amen. Why don't y'all scoot down this way a little bit, and that way we can get you all more front and center. This is wonderful. Amen. Let's take a moment to pass the microphone down and have each one introduce themselves. Toby Stevens. I'm Erica Stevens. Aaron Miller. Jane Zena Miller. Shirley Miller. Yeah, who else is here? Amen. This is truly wonderful as we welcome these folks officially into our family this morning. So I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over them, and I'm going to ask you to extend your hand this way. And join me in praying that prayer of blessing on each one of these. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for each of these that are becoming part of our, our family this morning. Father, we pray your blessing upon them, that you would bless their coming in, their going out, their rising up, their sitting down, that you would bless them supernaturally, abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they can ask or think. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and ask you to please send your holy angels to stand guard and stand watch over them, to guard them, protect them, keep them safe, watch over them and be with them, protect them completely from all hurt or harm or danger or sickness or disease or accident or injury or attack of the enemy or any kind of infection or anthrax or act of war or infirmity or act of violence or act of terrorism or act of shooter in Jesus' name. Father, we just place a hedge around them, a hedge of protection around them in Jesus' name. And Father, we lift them up to you. We pray for them like we pray for our own family in Jesus' name. And Father, we just ask that you would, Lord, welcome them into our family. And we welcome them into our family. We just embrace them in the love of God and in prayer. And Lord, their going to be our spiritual brothers and sisters, moms and dads, sons and daughters. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for each of these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all stay here just another second. Um, you remember me talking about the tech crew a little while ago. Well, we have recruited someone who is willing to be the new leader of our tech crew. And that is Miss Erica Stevens. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. So, all of you who are like minded, sound, Lights, projection, media, CDs, DVDs, all of that stuff that I know absolutely nothing about, but some of you do, or some of you are willing to learn, you need to get to know Miss Erica, and she will be your leader on that team. Amen. Let's praise the Lord for that. All right, and as these folks get ready to be seated, let's one more time thank God and thank them for becoming part of our family. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Let me uh, proudly introduce Johnny Hughes from Indian Ministries of North America. Let's welcome Johnny Hughes.
Johnny and I uh, go way back, and Johnny and Denise go way back, uh, years and years. We won't tell about how many years, but <laughs> but uh, in in recent years, his life has taken a drastic turn. And he has begun this ministry to Native Americans. And I want him to share what's going on with this wonderful ministry. So let's welcome Johnny. Thank you, Pastor. It's uh, indeed a privilege to be here again with the Parkway Church family and to be able to share with you a little bit about what God is doing on the Native American reservations and communities that we are working uh, thank you so much for your support and for what this church has done for us over the last several years, and uh, it's been an, it has been a very important impact into the kingdom uh, as far as we've seen lives changed, young and old alike, and we're just uh, so proud of that. For those of you who may not know who we are, my father uh, had a vision for this ministry many years ago, actually when I was about five years old, so that's been a few years ago, and um, he God called him at that moment to Take the, his, take the gospel to his people, which we're of Cherokee descent. And we did that as I was a child growing up. And then the vision kind of just kind of went underground, I like to say, for a while. But it was like an underground stream. It never quit flowing. It was just out of sight for a while. But then in early 2000, it came bursting forth and God opened the door. And we've just been going crazy ever since as far as ministry goes. And we're now working off and on in about 11 different states with about 16 different tribes. Uh, we have uh, a few areas that we are working more consistently. Uh, right now we're working with the Cherokee tribe and, of course, in North Carolina. We're working with the Choctaw tribe down in Mississippi on an every-month basis. We also have a ministry center that this church sent a group to uh, last summer to do vacation Bible school in western Oklahoma in the town of Hammond, Oklahoma. And we have been able to see God do a lot, of, a lot of changes in the areas that we've been working. While you were there, the group that was there, you got the opportunity to clean out a building that we had acquired for a warehouse. Well, now to let you know, it does have shelving up. It is beginning to be a functioning warehouse. And we had a church out of Texas this year uh, gave us the money to buy an actual forklift to use in the facility. So it's been a, an awesome time to see what's happening there. Um, our youth mentoring program that we've been doing over the last few years has really begun to take off over the last couple of years. Uh, one in Mississippi, the Choctaw youth, uh, we are actually, over the last three years, we've been mentoring upwards of about, probably to all total, about, about 50 to 60 kids in that one community. And it's beginning to grow even faster right now. And we've added Oklahoma now with a youth mentoring program. It's an after-school program. And we've already just, we started it up last year. The new year started in September of this year, and we've already, uh, we had like 30-something kids the first, the, or 22 kids the first time, and last week they said they had about uh, 10 new kids, so it's, it's really beginning to uh, take off there. We are always doing uh, new things. One thing with our youth program is trying to teach them life skills, not just uh, we want them to get the word, but we want them to learn how to, what God means when he wants us to live a whole life, a complete life. So we've been trying to teach these kids the, the life skills that they need to get through life just to live life. And so many of them have no idea because their parents are either, they're either drunk or high or the grandparents are the same way and they're dealing the drugs to their kids and grandkids and it's just, it's a sad situation all the way around. And I've shared with you many times how that has grown our, our youth of the Native American communities into such a dire, uh, a dire area of, of suicide. And we've seen so many young people across the nation and, and, and tribes that have been affected by uh, youth suicide. And so it's, it's one of the things that's always on our mind and always weighs heavy on us is the fact that we've got to get these kids and get the word into them, get them grounded in a faith that they can stand on and know that when nobody else seems to be there that God is with you always. And so one of our young ladies that really kind of shocked me uh, this past couple of weeks ago came up to us, and she's very, she talks about praying all the time, and she's, she's in, her tw in her 20s, and she came up, and she sat down, and her little boy was playing around in our lobby and, and picked up a Bible or something, handed it to her, and, and she looked at it, and she looked at me, and she said, so what is the Bible anyway? And my jaw dropped. I'm like, 
you know, she goes to church and she does, you know, all this. But she said, what is it anyway? Exactly what is it? And I said, well, so in a very simple terms, I said, anything you face in life, the answer is in it. So I would begin to share with her about it being God's word. And she asked if she could take the Bible with her. And I said, by all means, I'll even get you another one to go with it. And so we were just excited because she's been coming around. God's been drawing her around. Her and my wife have really connected as far as friendship. And, and it's been great to see God beginning to, to just draw her in a little bit. She's from a very traditional family, which is not a Christian-based family. But uh, she's beginning to get inquisitive, and, I, and I'm excited about where God's going to take that. Many of you know we drive a Dodge Dooley. It's 2003 Dodge Dooley, and everybody wants to know, how's that truck running? Well, it's still running good. We're at 587,000 miles on it now. And we're still plugging along, but uh, the maintenance on it is starting to weigh a little heavier. Uh, the motor's still great and great, but everything else can't last that long. But uh, it's one of those things that we've decided this year to be good stewards with the money that God sends us. We are raising funds right now to actually purchase a new truck in addition to the one we have. Uh, and it's just been, a, it's been a, great, a great truck, and I can't complain at all. But if any of you feel led to lay, the Lord lays it on your heart sometime over the next few months to drop a little extra, we will be glad to have that and put it in the pot because they're not cheap. I can tell you that. But... Uh, a couple of things that's coming up that we would like to just put out there and let you know that we need you. It's not very far away as far as location. And some of you may have been before. I know Brother Donnie has come over a few times. But um, we do wood splitting for the elders in Cherokee. We, and we're not talking about an axe or a sledgehammer and a wedge. We're talking about big hydraulic splitters. But we help the elders over there and they shut in families and stuff every fall. And we've got one coming up. Uh, starting October the 10th, it'll be a three-day splitting of firewood. And that's all you do is just sit there and split firewood for three days. My wife cooks three meals a day and has you fed very well in her words so she can work you really hard. So, uh, but she just makes sure that, that you're fed well. We stay at the Church of God campground in Whittier. And one of the teams that we had coming is in right outside of Myrtle Beach. So I'm sure they are not going to be making it because they're going to be fighting their own flood. I know for a fact their house is about to be flooded in the matter coming days. So if any of you guys or ladies even too, it doesn't really matter, uh, would love to come over for about three days and help us. We start on October the 11th, that Thursday morning, and we'll split Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And so we would love to have it, and we could really use the help. Uh, we have we multiple splitters, and I, there's only one of me, so... Um, I would really appreciate some help. Um, also, we have Christmas coming up. And so uh, we do Christmas every year for about, it ranges anywhere from six, 800 kids to 1,000 kids or more. And so we'll be doing those in Mississippi and Cherokee and Oklahoma. So anything that you guys would like to uh, get involved with, any of you groups or Sunday school rooms, wanna, you know, classes would like to know something you guys could help us with, there's always opportunities of things that we need and all of that, so you just be sure and get with us. We have a product table in the back. You can come and visit with us after service. Um, all those proceeds from the product goes straight into the ministry, so I uh, just appreciate all you do. I appreciate this church so much, and the, your pastor, you've got a great pastor and his family, so thank you again. God bless. I've got a question for you this morning. How many of you have Native American ancestry? You have Cherokee or some other tribe as part of your bloodline. Go ahead, raise your hand up high. Could, would you mind, would you stand? Those that have Native American background, would you stand? That's incredible. That's incredible. All right, you may be seated. Now, let me ask you another question. Who is going to reach the Native Americans? And let me ask you one more question. If not us then who? 
I believe that the original purpose of God in bringing the European settlers to this brave new world, that the original purpose was for us to reach the Native American people with God's love and mercy and grace. But you know, historically, we have failed miserably. Over 300 treaties have been broken with the Native American peoples. So now we're left with a place of brokenness in our land with all of these tribes. So many are facing brokenness. So we now have the opportunity to humbly become a, a beacon of light to these Native American peoples. I'm going to ask if you'll join me in being as generous as you possibly can and blessing this ministry, Indian Ministries of North America, with the abundance that God has blessed you with. If you want to make a check out, you can just make it payable to Parkway Church of God. You can note IMNA, I-M-N-A, on your check or on your envelope. But everything that's going to come in in this offering will go directly to Indian Ministries of North America. And it will, it will be used, as you can tell, I'm, I'm amazed at, at Johnny's report of all of the youth that are being mentored. That's, that's amazing. That's wonderful. Amen. So, we may never go to Oklahoma, or we nev may never go to the Choctaw Nation, or we may never go to these other people groups, but our dollars can be partners with Johnny. And as, as Romans chapter 10 says, how can they hear without a preacher? But then it goes on to say, how can they preach unless they are sent? And so our dollars can be the sending agency for this ministry. And then on that glad day when we're all reunited with the Lord, we'll be able to see the souls that were impacted by our giving as we partnered together with Johnny and with Indian Ministries of North America. So let's bow our heads and give thanks to God. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy and love and all of your grace. But Lord, there's so many lives that have never really heard about the good news, the saving gospel of Jesus Christ amongst the Native American tribes. And so, Father, it's our desire to partner together with Johnny and this ministry and to be sending agents and to reach them with the love of Christ. Father, we ask that you would Please take our gifts now, sanctify them and multiply them, and use them for the advancement of your kingdom amongst the Native American peoples. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give.
For there is freedom today in Christ Jesus. Freedom from the bondage of the past. Freedom from the chains that once bound you. And I'm calling you today to freedom. But you must be willing to be free. You must be willing to be set free. You must be willing to forsake the chains and the bondages of the past. Therefore, run to me, says the Lord, and I will set you free, so says the Lord. There's a picture that comes to my mind, and it's of a prisoner 
who's desperately clinging to the chains. Perhaps it's because that's all that the prisoner's ever known. Perhaps the prisoner's just been told that he's supposed to be a prisoner. And so he's just accepted that and not striven for anything else. And so the prisoner is just gripping the chains. But your place of freedom is when you quit white knuckling the chains and you let go of the chains and let God take care of the chains. And I don't know about any particular situation or circumstance in the room today, but I believe the Holy Spirit is calling for those who desire to experience the freedom of Christ. And if right now, if you desire to be set free, It may be something small. It may be something big. It may be something that we don't even know about. But if you desire to be set free this morning, would you just come forward and let us pray with you this morning? Don't be shy. Don't be bashful. The Holy Spirit is calling today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And I'm going to ask for some prayer partners this morning, some women to stand with the women, some men to stand with the men. And I'm going to ask for someone who can be in agreement as we pray right now concerning the freedom each one needs to embrace right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Church, would you just stretch your hands this way and pray for these folks? In Jesus' name, thank you, God. I still need another man or two to come up. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Let's pray together. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. People have been set free here today. Hallelujah. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for setting us free. We thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, that no foe can stand against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty warrior. Hallelujah. And this day you have marched into battle, and all of your enemies have to leave. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel like we need to give him one more hand clap and shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Josh, will you come up? Many of you know that Josh is getting ready to go into the Air Force. And this Tuesday, is that the day you, you ship out? I don't know if I'm allowed to say ship out when we're talking to the Air Force. I don't guess we're that those two go together. Aren't you proud of Josh for his service to our country? Amen. That's all right. Let's stand and show him our appreciation. Amen. Would you stretch your hands this way and let's pray a covering prayer over him. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we've known Josh since he was a little boy. And Father, you're raising him up for this time, for this season, for such a time as this. And Father, we, we plead the blood of Jesus over him, over his heart, his soul, his spirit, his mind, his body. In Jesus' name, that you would please send your holy angels to stand guard and stand watch over him all of his days and all of his ways. And specifically, Lord, we're, we're praying, Lord, as he goes off to boot camp and, and these other first steps that he's taking, that you would be a hedge of protection around his soul, around his spirit, around his mind, around his heart, around his body, in Jesus' name, and that no harm would come to him in any way, only blessings and good things. We pray in Jesus' name, and we send him out with our blessing, Lord. We bless his coming in, his going out, his rising up, his sitting down. And we give him our blessing as well, Lord. We're proud of him, Lord. And Father, we're, we're praying your blessing upon him most of all, that your hand would be upon him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just feel like we're supposed to pray for all those that have been in the path and are still in the path of Florence. Can we just join together and agree together in prayer for all those that are facing the after effects of this storm? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you see the devastation. You know all of the hearts and lives that have been shattered by this storm. Father, in Jesus' name, we're asking that you would draw every heart to you and to your son Jesus Christ that in the brokenness of the situation that they would not turn to alcohol or any other fix Lord but instead that they would turn their hearts to you that they would turn their hearts to your son Jesus Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would grip the hearts of all those that have been affected by the storm and bring them to Jesus. And Father, Lord, we're also going to participate in the future in, in sending help to all those that are devastated by this 
this hurricane. But in the meantime, Lord, we pray that you would comfort and that you would strengthen and that you would encourage and that you would give peace to those that are facing devastation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I guess y'all can be seated. Y'all are already seated, I guess. Aren't you thankful for the praise team and their ministry? And the tech crew. Amen. And let's thank all of our church volunteers. Can we just do that right now? Amen. We're coming to the Lord's table for the Lord's Supper this morning. That's always a sobering time, but it's especially sober, sobering this week because this week is on the Jewish calendar, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The Day of Atonement, beginning Tuesday at sundown through Wednesday at sundown. This is the day when the high priest in days of old, the one time a year where the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice and the sins of of the Jewish people would be forgiven for that year. Leviticus 23, verses 26 through 32. It was the tenth day of the seventh month on the Jewish calendar. It was to be a sacred assembly. You, the Jewish people were to deny themselves, present an offering, and do no work. Leviticus chapter 16, verses 29 through 34 says, On the tenth day of the seventh month, the priest who is anointed and ordained to succeed his father as high priest is to make atonement. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites. Once a year, the high priest would cleanse himself and go in and offer the sacrifice for him and for the rest of the Jewish people. There's tradition that he would have a rope around his foot as he went in. And the hem of his robe had bells on it. And so if his offering was accepted, they would still, still hear the bells tingling outside. But if his offering wasn't accepted and he was struck down, they couldn't go into the Holy of Holies to retrieve his body. So they would drag his body out by the rope. A somber time, a dreadful time. But how many are thankful that today, through Jesus Christ, Christ is our sacrifice of atonement. And we don't have to live in the fear of those days, 
Now, we still need the fear of the Lord, but we don't have to live in the fear of those days as we find in Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace. Hallelujah. Through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus, God presented Him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in His blood. He did this to demonstrate His justice because in His forbearance He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate His justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So we now, through the blood of Jesus and through faith in His blood, Jesus Christ is now our sacrifice of atonement. And we have our sins forgiven by putting our faith and our trust and our hope in Jesus. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that... He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 4, verse 10. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and made a way for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Christ himself is the sacrifice, is the sin offering for us. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place or the holy of holies as a sin offering. But the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. The bodies used to be burned outside the gate. And so Jesus was crucified outside the city gate. He fulfilled once and for all the sacrifice of the sin offering. No longer does the high priest have to go into the Holy of Holies. Jesus, once and for all, became our sin offering and He has made a way for us where there seemed to be no way. But Jesus isn't just our sin offering. Jesus is also our great high priest. According to the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews chapter 9. I'm going to read quite a bit of this, and then we're going to have communion here shortly. Hebrews 9, verse 1. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up. In its first room were the lampstand, the table, and the consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, or the holy of holies, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold-covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of the glory, 
overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priest entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place, or the Holy of Holies, had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still standing. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place, the holy of holies, once for all by his own blood. So Jesus is our high priest, and he went in once for all, carrying his own blood as the sacrifice, having obtained eternal redemption, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. How many people have been set free this morning? Anybody in here been set free? Amen. It was necessary then... Verse, let's skip down to verse 24. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Christ on the cross is our once for all sacrifice for our sin. Christ on the cross, on the cross is himself the high priest giving his own blood for you and for me. Mark chapter 15, verse 37 and 38. Jesus is on the cross. And it says, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. With a loud cry. What was that loud cry? Does anybody remember from the other Gospels? It's Jesus' declaration from the cross. Jesus said, It is finished, it is completed. What did he mean by that? He meant 
that he had now entered into the heavenly temple. Hallelujah. And he was the high priest, and he had presented his own blood in the heavenly temple. And his declaration was, it is finished. It is completed. It is over. It is ended. It is accomplished. Your salvation is secure if you put your faith and trust and hope in the finished work at Calvary. Hallelujah. And so, with that cry of victory, as Jesus was entering into the heavenly temple, what happened in the earthly temple? The curtain, the veil that separated the holy of holies from the rest of the temple, it ripped from top to bottom. It ripped in half, showing what was going on in the heavenly temple because Jesus, the high priest, was entering the heavenly temple with his own blood, showing that Jesus had made the way for us. No longer would there be separation from God. No longer would we have to be aliens and strangers apart from his covenant. But he had made a way where there seemed to be no way. And now we can be adopted as royal heirs, royal sons and daughters in the households of faith. And we are adopted and made heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we have inherited the fullness of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Would somebody get excited like I am? Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for the finished work of Calvary? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it is in remembrance of that victory that we come to the Lord's table. Yes, we come with sorrow, recognizing the pain and the suffering and the agony that Jesus took upon himself. And yet, in that pain and suffering and agony is our victory. And so, yes, we come with sadness, but we also come with joy. Because Jesus has opened up the Holy of Holies and made a way for us before the throne room of Almighty God. Thanks be unto God who has given us the victory through Jesus Christ, his son. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we come to the Lord's table today, we come with humility and brokenness. And yet we come with joy and victory. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. We practice open communion here at Parkway. Our communion service is open to every believer who has been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are welcome to join us. But let us pause first 
and examine ourselves in the presence of the Lord before we come to the Lord's table. Let's have a moment of silence in His presence. Thank you for the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we humble ourselves before you today, confessing our sins. And you said that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just, and you will forgive us of our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we ask that you would please cleanse us and wash us and purify us and sanctify us by the blood of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the washing of the water of your word. And please fill us with your Holy Spirit as we come to your table. The table that has been set by your Son with his own body and his own blood. In the name of Jesus, please sanctify these elements as we partake today. This juice and this bread, please sanctify it to our bodies and our bodies to you. And in Jesus' name, Give us the joy of your Holy Spirit as we feast at the Lord's table today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are free to participate. If you don't want to participate today, that's okay. You can just pass the tray on by. and There will not be anybody condemning you. There's no condemnation here. But we invite you to participate today. Please hold the elements, the cup and the bread, and we'll all participate together in just a few moments.